macchiato? Uh, it is hot or ice? Um, you can give me a hot one, a large. A large hot macchiato caramel? Yes. Anything else for your order? Um, no, that's it. Good morning! I got my coffee, y'all, so I guess I can talk. Okay, it is like 4.25 in the morning. Um, typical morning. My clinic, we just opened. Um, we are only open Monday, Wednesday, Friday, so we do like 12 hour shifts. So this is a beautiful Wednesday morning. Um, if I had to open, um, which is the first thing I gotta do to water and you know, open the clinic and um, plug in all the machines, then I have to be there at like four. Um, but since I'm just um, an extra person coming in, a regular employee and I didn't have to open, um, I basically get to come at like 4.45. Our first patient started like 5.15. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, y'all. So it really don't take me long to set up the machines. So as long as I'm near at least by 5. Honestly, they're cool. That's what time the nurse usually gets there, the nurse manager. So I'm good. But good morning. I really couldn't talk earlier. Um, I usually, my babies, my man, hubby, and family, they usually sleep, so I hate to make noise early in the morning, so that's why I was real lucky at the crib. But anyway, I'm in the car, I got my Doki Donuts coffee. Um, I don't really be hungry in the morning, so I rarely eat. Um, I may eat a little something on my first little break, though. But this early, I just want my coffee, and I'm pretty much good to go. I'm in a good mood today, y'all. Um, yeah, I'm going to work. Do my little 10 hours today. Hopefully, I get up at 3. Today is bleach day. Um, so, we have the bleach machines. We do it every Wednesday. So, instead of me getting off um, a certain time, I'm going to get off like probably like 45 minutes later because of bleach. But it's okay. It has to be done. So, I'm used to it. Um, but I'm definitely going to be trying to leave up out of there on time today. Um, because I'm having a lounge party on this beautiful Cinco de Mayo day. Yes, yes, yes. I love my medical career. Absolutely. But I'm also into being an entrepreneur. So I started my own boutique. It's called Boss Babe Boutique. Yes, I have my LLC, super excited. I have my business license, business account, my inventory. Started off with like 50 plus items. So I have like literally like 300 items in my home. Yes, I would love to have a storefront, but um, the veterans told me to wait at least the first year. I see, you know, how everything goes. And then actually give me a storefront. I'm super excited. So not only am I pursuing my nursing career, I'm also pursuing my entrepreneurship. So I'm so excited. So, you know, we only got one life to live and it's limitless, especially with God, any and everything is always a possibility. So always keep that in mind, y'all. Absolutely. Don't let nobody limit you. Okay, you are awesome continue to grow life is all about growing 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 you live you learn you do what the you want to do don't let nobody tell you what's in your heart you know what i mean yes i do have two careers yes i do you know i have a husband yes i have um three beautiful daughters we have properties we have a home god has been good so with that being said yeah but today I'm going to talk about Alice's technician. I'm going to just walk y'all through a little bit. And a little snippets of what I do. I can't sh really show too much at the clinic because of HIPAA. Because of HIPAA. Um, but I'm going to show y'all enough. You know, just a little knickknacks about um, what I experience when I come to the dialysis clinic. I love what I do. I've been doing it for so long. Beautiful dialysis technician. I am bonnet certified, CHT. Uh, I have learned a lot over the years. I'm also CNA certified. I'm also phlebotomy technician certified. So I've worked on all those fields. But dialysis technician happens to be my favorite. 
yeah so that's what i do i'm also a nursing student yes been doing that for a while now um nursing is something but i love it it's in my blood i love wearing my scrubs although i'd rather be in my little stilettos but you know <laughs> It's so fun helping people, you know what I mean? It's just communicating, interacting with your patients. Super dope, super dope. So I love what I do, absolutely. So I'm gonna take y'all on a little tour on what I do. A little bit here, a little bit there. If y'all have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Comment below or email me. Sorry it's so dark. It's like four or something in the morning. And yeah, I had a little um cell phone holder, but yeah, my baby kind of broke it. So we gotta do, we gotta do, you know what I mean? But I'll see y'all in a minute. Mm -hmm. How you doing? Okay. You're you're welcome. check the gauges.
look at the um, activity panel and record what you see. Check all the meters right here. Um, it's a whole process. We're doing the water in the morning. I have to do a different video for that one. Everybody water room pretty much set up the same, but some rooms are set up a little different. Just a little bit.
Time. Hey y'all, <sighs> I'm back. So basically, I had a busy day. Okay, so first thing first. Um, the other day I had broke this video up to two into two videos, so that's why you see the different hairstyles. <laughs> But anyway, um, basically the role of a dialysis technician, you got to monitor your patients on the dialysis machine, as I have stated in the previous video. Okay, so my typical morning, I wake up three in the morning. Um, I get up, make breakfast, get dressed as a normal human being. Um, it's usually no traffic, not that many cars outside in the morning. I get prepared to come here. When I get here, um, first thing first, I check the schedule. First thing first, I actually check um, my temperature. You know, due to the pandemic, we gotta check our temperature. Okay, cool. So before the nurse gets here, um, before the patients get here, we, as a dialysis technicians, we have to set up the machines. Okay, so we are open Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you're in a particular group, we rotate groups. So we'll get to know all the patients. So if you're in group one, you have to do the water in the morning. So that means you have to come earlier to check the water. Dialysis patients basically have a different type of water. You cannot put sewer water through the machines to dialyze patients. They would die can't do that so they have a whole purification situation going through um you as the water girl in the morning you have to come earlier to check that um it's a long list of meters you have to check gauges to go around the water room you have to make sure everything is within its right gauge um to know that the water is running efficiently um, it's no alarms, it's salt in the salt tank, 
which are these huge bags that we have to put in. That's a different story. <laughs> but anyway, you have to make sure the water is boom. The salt is under it. The water is on top of it. But you have to make sure there's enough salt in that. Um, I think I showed it in the video. It's like this huge, um, like a big old globe, like a black, um, huge container that's full of like these big salt pellets. We have to constantly like put in there, fill it up um, for the patients. Um, it basically goes through a system of RO water. Um, it has to go through the water softener tank. Um, the carbon, right, it's, it's, I have to hold, do a whole video for the water. Because it's a whole, um, it's a whole university to talk about that. Because it's so much. <laughs> You'd be surprised how much purification you got to go through. But you got to do it. So basically, forget all of that, but the water girl, you basically come in and you have to check the water, check the gauges, document it, and then you got to check the water, make sure there's no chlorine in the water, or you can't dialyze the patients. You can't put them on the machine if it's not within a meter. So it has to be within the meters. The RN has to check it off. Um, they usually can do that when they come in or, you know, and whichever, but you have to check it. That's the part of it. Then once it's A-OK, -okay, then you go let the other technicians know like, hey, you know, the water's good. We can start, you know, setting up the machines. Cool. By that time, other people then came in. You setting up the machines. Each patient um, by law on a typical day, if it's not short staff, um, you get like four patients. OK, four patients. So four patients, so you're responsible for those four patients. Um, it depends on what shift you have. It's usually first, second, third shift. Um, it depends on what clinic, what county, what state. Everybody got different stuff, you know. But a typical first shift, like, um, typically for us, like our first patient get on at 5 in the morning. So that's the goal. Um, so we cannot start, even though our machines may be set up and everything, as I showed you guys in the earlier video. Um, we cannot start until the nurse gets here. You can't start. Nothing. Bonito. Like, the most you can do is open the front door so they're not sitting outside. And they can sit in the lobby, but you are not to let them on the treatment floor until the nurse gets here. Okay? Cool. Once the nurse gets here, checks the water, he or she does her part, nurse duties, as they do coming in the morning. You have to ask for permission. Hey, can I let these patients in? If it's A-OK, -okay, cool. By this time, you should have all your machines set up. And all your machines set up, you should have the blood lines, the dialyzers. You have to basically, when you do set up the machines, you have to check the doctor's orders. Each patient has a doctor order. It is how you what dialyzer they on. It is how you um what type of acid they are on. Usually, most of them are really basically the same acid unless they have extra potassium, like three K or something. But anyway, you got to check whether they have an access, a fistula, a graft, or a catheter. Majority of these patients come all the time, so honestly, we kind of it's like repetitive. We kind of already know. Our patients so you already know what to get but if you're a new person you still have to check the orders I still glance at the orders because the doctor can change something on there and you don't even know you know so basically you set up the machine cool make sure the tubing's right it has to go through a series of tests um to make sure the machine is running right so not only is the water okay you also have to make sure the machines are running right they have to go through numerous tests that the machine takes you through that's how you know the machine is a a to go if the machine does not pass the test you do not put that patient on that machine. You have to make sure the machine is running efficiently. So the machine will let you know after you set up your tubings, your dialyzer, your saline bag, and run saline through um, the whole setup and the test okay, and you recirculate that um, setup, you should be good to go. Um, we put like these little, I like to call them like little napkins, but we put like these big old, um, like little drapes over the um, chairs 
um, for sanitation purposes. So everybody gets like a drape. We put them over like you see me do um, in the earlier video. Um, and then after that, we basically um, have our little setups. You want to have your setups um, pack ready. So if they have a catheter, as I showed you guys earlier, like is certain things you need for the catheter, you put it in the pack, you have it ready. The goal is to be prepared, okay? The next thing is if they have like a, a access, which can you lay them in the arm? Um, you have to make sure you have your needles and the correct needle because we have like about three different needles. Um, majority is 15 gauge and you, um, but you have to make sure you have the right needles. Um, some people use um, alcohol, some people use Benadine depending on the situation. Um, you have to make sure that's on point. Then after you make sure the water is okay, you make sure the machine's okay. Next thing you have to make sure, check the acid, make sure they're on the right acid. We get ours through the wall, unless you're a 3K, you, you're on a different acid, then we have to pull it from the back. Um, yeah, basically, so make sure the machine is ready. When the patients come in, they all get schedules. Sometimes they can be right on schedule and sometimes they can't, depending on the patient, what time they come, <sighs> water issues on our end, different things of that such that which you just really ain't got no control over. But all that X, Y, Z got to be on point before you can even get the patients in here to die by some on the machine. Okay, cool. Once they come in, once they come in, you're basically going to take the temperature okay take the temperature make sure you take those temperature especially during covid you need to know take that temperature okay so we use the little gun boop cool good to go um everybody got a mask they, they usually come in with the mask already but you can give them one and give them a new mask they come in first thing they're gonna do they're gonna take off their stuff and they're gonna weigh they're gonna weigh on the scale we need that weight all the patients have what we call um, an estimated dry weight. It's called EDW. Um, basically, it's like the ideal weight that they should be, you know, in their BMI and things of that such. Now, that can go up and down depending on if the patient lose weight, they gain weight as time go on. But as a technician, you should be able to look at the history. You should be able to kind of, you know, pay attention to that. You kind of know if they lose weight or not. But anyway, um, it's a certain range that they kind of stay on. So it's very, very crucial that you get the right, accurate um, weight when they come in. And we go by kilos, not pounds. That's how we kind of can differentiate like what we take, what are we taking off of them, okay? So majority, um, it can be like from one kilo to three kilos. That's pretty much the basic. Once they go past that, they kind of oh they got a lot of fluid on them and you really have to watch them because if you take off too much fluid that the patient can handle um they can go out on you or they can get really sick um and things of that such so i mean sometimes you really can't prevent that um but just monitor yourself with that and if it's like too much like say for instance a patient come in and they're like five kilos over Majority of the time, that's too much. You're not supposed to take that much off. I mean, for the more heavier set um, um, people who are used to that, they just get in all the fluid and they just take it off. Okay, if the doctor said it's okay, the nurse said it's okay, then okay. But in certain circumstances, I try not to go past three. That's just me. They're only on the machine um, from three to four hours, depending on the doctor's order. So that's just me. And I mean, if it's too much over, then you can um, tell the nurse to ask the doctor if maybe they can set up for extra treatment for that patient. We do have that um, things. Um, these patients, they do have the right to get off the machine early and they do have the right to come if they want to. Like we're not forcing their hand. We are outpatient clinic. We're here to you know, dialyze the patient, make sure they're okay, make sure they're, you know, the dialysis, basically the machine, it works as their kidneys. Their kidneys basically go out and they don't work anymore. So the machine is like their lifeline. So if they don't get dialysis, eventually that fluid builds up in you. Like a regular human being, we have two kidneys. Our kidneys move. It filters our body, it filters the waste in our body, etc. So it moves by itself. The minute those kidneys go out, 
um, they have to get on a dialysis or you have to replace it with another kidney, somebody like to get a transplant from another human being. If you don't, um, you know, filter that waste out with using the artificial kidney, aka machine, and that waste builds up around your heart, around your body, um, you can get over fluid and you can literally die, you know? So it's very crucial that people kind of take it seriously when they own dialysis, you know? But at the same time, they're grown. We can't make them. Only thing, like savings, they want to get off early for whatever reason. Like they have the sign of um, AMA, which is basically like something saying, I'm aware of, you know, the consequences if I get off early, I'm authorizing this and they do a signature. If they doing it all the time, then you report it to the nurse. Well, you gotta report it to the nurse anyway. But on a regular, like, just let the nurse know, the nurse will let the doctor know, maybe the doctor or the social worker or dietitian, you know, somebody can kind of come in and kind of talk to that person. But you don't want your um, patients just going without dialysis. No, that wouldn't be good. Um, but anyway, we, Back to what I was saying. Um, we bring them in, you take their vitals, okay? You basically get the weight, get the temperature, ask them how they doing, how's their day going, walk them to walk them to the machine that they're gonna be stationed at. Um, you basically get their, basically check their vitals, do the blood pressure, do the basics. Um, what you're doing with the blood pressure, you're basically checking the blood pressure every 30 minutes. Every 30 minutes, you have to um, check the blood pressure. You have to make sure that blood pressure is within meters. If it's not um, within the right, you know, era, then you have to turn that um, UF off. You have to assess that. You have to check on the patient, ask them. Like seven instances, like they're on the machine, they started um, an hour in, they, their blood pressure was um, normal, but then all of a sudden it just dropped. You have to turn that UF off. You maybe have to give them, say, say, Lynn, you have to go over there and check on the patients. You have to see what's going on because obviously something is going on. And you need to stop pulling fluid because you cannot pull fluid, fluid if the um, blood pressure is too low. You do not want it too low. That's not a good sign. That's, that's why we have to monitor it every 30 minutes. Or you don't want it if it's too high. That's not good either, you know. So you have to, your job is to basically put these patients on so they can get their treatment efficiently and you are there to monitor them on the machine, okay? That's your job. That is what a dialysis technician do. You make sure these people walk out alive. You know, certain circumstances, things do happen. We have had people die on the machine. I've never experienced it, but I'm... You know, the facilities, I mean, sometimes stuff happens, you know, just like in any medical facility, you know, it's going to happen, but not often. It should not happen often, you know. Um, the more, the thing, you basically want to send them on the machine and then take them off the machine. You're going to, their access, their lifeline, you're going to cannulate them or you're going to use the catheter. You're going to pull the blood, the red pulls the blood, the blue venous puts the clean blood back in them, Okay. So you basically want to put them on the machine, you're going to take them off. You're going to monitor and make sure everything is okay. BP is okay. BP got to be over 100 or more or they ain't leaving. You get that sitting blood pressure. You get that standing blood pressure. You take that temperature. You make sure they're okay. You don't want your patient to go out on you. If they don't feel good, you need to document everything, document everything, document everything. The old saying, if you do not document it, then it didn't happen. So you have to cover your butt. You hear me? Cover your butt. Cover your license, cover your certification, you know what I mean? And actually have some passion with taking care of patients. If you don't have the passion for this field, do not get in it. Go do retail, go do something else. I hate seeing people that's in the medical field and they're just there for a check. Why? 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 It's more. You should have some type of compassion in your heart to make sure they're okay. And like word on the street, like if they come in, talk to them. Hello, how are you doing? The stuff I've seen is crazy. Like, these are still human beings. Talk to them. They going through enough. They already on dialysis. You know what I mean? I didn't say some stuff. But anyway, be nice. Present them with a smile. Yes, we have to wear the mask. Dialysis technicians, we've been wearing masks even before the pandemic. But anyway, I mean, just, just be wholesome. Make them feel good. You know, make the experience 
good you know what i mean and then honestly you'll build a bond and a relationship with these people like they see you three times a day like you build something great with them and sometimes like they don't want to talk to the nurses they don't want to talk to the social worker they don't want to talk to the doctor so it may be questions they have and you can be an advocate for them and they may feel comfortable with you you know be that advocate for your patients have the compassion in your heart baby okay it's okay it's okay to look out for another that's what you're getting a feel for baby but anyway um <sighs> back to the subject put on a machine on Wednesdays, we bleach. So at the end of the day, we have to bleach the machines on Wednesdays. We do that every Wednesday. We have to bleach the machine. It's like a whole little process it goes through um, to make sure the machine is clear. And then you have to check it after it's rinsed and the whole little process with bleach to make sure there's no bleach left over. Okay? So that's on Wednesdays. Um, If you are a person that ha has acid, as you guys seen earlier, I had acid. Baby, girl, eight, yeah, eight boxes of that stuff. That stuff stinks. It'll burn your nose, all types of stuff. That's why you see me with all the PPE on. Because I don't need none of that extra. It's strong enough. You can still smell it through. But you have to actually put eight boxes. It's literally like three to four bags in those boxes. You have to put eight of those heavy boxes um, of acid into that big tank that y'all see me working on. And that part, I'm going to make sure I fast forward because, baby, I be taking my time because I need my back. You know what I mean? I got plenty of life to live. So, I take my time putting that in there. And, I mean, you take your time. It's less, you know, of the debris going up your nose and your hair and all everywhere. And save your back, baby. These jobs ain't worth it. Save your back. Okay? But, anyway, I basically have to, like, put... Like, if I'm on acid, we do acid probably, like, every three weeks. Two to three weeks. It's a big old tank. So, that's why you got to fill it up with eight boxes. You have to. And then it goes through these steps that you have to check. You have to make sure that's in measure, good measurements. You have to document the bags, the lot numbers, and expiration date. And document all of those beautiful things. So that's the thing within itself. We also have to do the salt, as I mentioned earlier, where you have to put these big old heavy pellets, salt pellets in this big old dome to make sure that salt um, is good to go. Um, it's a great job, honestly. All oh, before I get it, if you have to close, uh, I, I rarely close, um, but when I do, you have to do the hardest check. Basically, it's like the end of the day check. It's really simple. You put it under there. It has to be a, a certain color, certain measurement, and show the nurse and you go. You know what I mean? Uh, on a regular day, when we close down our machines, we acid them. We acid them, and we put it in heat disinfect. Okay? I probably do a video one of these days um, so you guys can, like, physically see me doing that. But um, I'm just telling you the basics, you know. Um, overall, it's really a rewarding job. I've been doing this for 10 plus years, and I love what I do. I love being a dialysis technician. I was in retail for years. For years, I've been working since I was 15. I loved retail as well. Um, but the medical field is definitely where I need to be. I was a CNA. I learned a lot in that field. A lot of work with that. <laughs> I've learned a lot though, absolutely. Um, I was a phlebotomy technician as well. I learned a lot as far as cannulating patients, not being afraid to cannulate them. Um, when you first started in the medical field, it's not nothing natural of you going up to somebody and kind of cannulating them with a needle. It's not nothing natural that anybody does. So you have to get used to that. So my phlebotomy technician, when I was a phlebotomist, um, I learned a lot in that field um, of really how the vein works and um, basically collecting the labs and the different colors and the serum. And we collect labs as a dialysis technician, um, but not as much as when I was a phlebotomist. phlebotomist. But that was a great field too. But dialysis technician, honestly, I've been here for the longest. Um, I love what I do. It's a lot of technical technicalities. So when you start out as a dialysis technician, like um, 
understand it's gonna be hard and you know what the hard part is not more so physical other than like the acid and the soft that y'all see me do but it's more so like um knowing step by step of what to do and actually not forgetting stuff like you're human like it's not nothing like we grow up we learn this in school so you actually have to train for this um and it's a lot of details like if you don't do the machine a certain way or set it up a certain way like it's gonna ring and it won't work if you don't cannulate the patient a certain way where their fistula is set up it won't work if you don't make sure the water is in its right measurements um the water alarm and it won't work so it's just a lot of a b c d e f g a lot of technicalities that comes with this job but i feel like repetitively after you do it con you know constantly you'll get it you'll get it and once you know it you know it and it becomes so much easier it gets easier y'all when you first start it's gonna be hard like when you first learn a dialysis technician but it's gonna be hard because you gotta remember all this stuff. It's a new whole little another world, but it's a great world. <laughs> Once you learn it, you got it. You got it, baby. You putting them on the machines, you taking them off. Hey, have a good day. Now you can have crazy days. It's gonna be like that as any job that you may have in any field. You gonna have some crazy days, especially if you short staff and you still gotta get these patients on. Um, that could be really rough or somebody over here bleeding and you gotta take this one off of the machine or somebody passing out like you'll be surprised what four patients can do within that time period you know um but other than that that's basically it um we work four to four we do 12 hour shifts other than our evening shifts people they usually come in at like eight they leave at like eight so that's how they get their 12 hours um the morning person i come in with like four other young ladies and we get them on the machine and we get them off it's very rewarding i love what i do as i've mentioned plenty of times um i'm definitely in nursing school yes it's time you know i gotta upgrade myself i didn't i got i have gained so much knowledge over the years and i'm just ready to elevate myself so i love nursing school it's a lot with nursing school but baby it's a blessing i'm happy to be doing what i do you know i'm happy to be in this medical field i love what i do it's extremely rewarding and if you feel like you want to go after it go after it you know you never know where this career will take you but that's basically my day-to-day, y'all. It's pretty simple. Technical, but simple. So if y'all have any questions, any questions, leave me a question down below. Or just email me. I'll let you know. I'll tell you the real tea about dialysis technician. Um, but I'll see y'all later. I love you guys. Thank you for watching my long but informative video. Um, if you want me to make more videos or you want to know certain things, I can make a video, whatever y'all want me to do. But with that being said, I hope you guys have a blessed journey and I'll talk to you later. This is your girl, I'm all tongue twisted. <laughs> this is your girl, Boss Lady Vine, and I'm checking out. Bye.